Hello students, I hope you all are watching my videos. So in our last class we were discussing about immunity. So quickly we will revise those uh, previous slides. So those are acquired immunity or specific immunity. I mean in the last class we were discussing about this uh, acquired immunity. I told you people acquired immunity means we will develop this immunity only after the birth. And why it is called a specific immunity? Because it is specific in its action. The word action, the mode of action refers to it is going to kill or prevent the entry of microbe or microorganism or pathogen into the body. So hence it is called as specific immunity. So it is acquired, which means that it is produced in response to an encounter. I told you encounter refers to infect. So with the pathogen based on the memory of the body, the word body refers to immune system and it is pathogen specific, hence the name. Next, when a pathogen for the first time infects the person, a low intensity of immune response is going to generate. I told you low intensity means the antibodies are going to produce in a lower rate. So it takes a little bit time, so called as primary response. The same time, when the pathogen enters second time, so when the person same pathogen attacks again or in the next time or in the future, the intensified immune response is going to generate. The intensified immune response refers, refers to the antibodies are going to produce in a massive rate. Massive rate refers to continuous. Um, so called as intensified immune response is generated, so thereby preventing the occurrence of disease. I mean to say it is going to prevent the disease. It is called as secondary response and it is possible because of memory of the immune system. Next acquired immunity which includes primary as well as secondary immune response. So it was two types of cells. I mean the whole uh, the acquired immunity it is by means of two important cells. So those two important cells are B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. So in the last class we were discussing, I mean discussing about uh, that B lymphocyte. So B lymphocyte means these are the uh, generation of WBCs. Uh, they secrete proteins called as antibodies uh, in response to a pathogen, response to pathogen into the blood and thereby fight with the pathogens. So I told you people yesterday uh, these antibodies are normally not present in the body and they are going to produce it by the B lymphocyte only when the pathogen enter into the body. It means that those antibodies are going to produce in the body only in presence of pathogen. Clear? So in response to that pathogen, the antibodies are going to produce. Next, antibodies means these are the specialized proteins with four polypeptide means long chain of protein the amino acids called as so uh, called as polypeptide chains in that out of four polypeptide chains two are called as heavy chains and two are called as light chains hence it is denoted as h2l2 cartoon i told you cartoon refers to a diagrammatic representation or how it look like so what is cartoon h2l2 to heavy chains to light chains next uh, what are the antibodies are present in the body? So those are mega T. I told you yesterday how to remember the antibodies. That is mega T refers to IgM, IgE, IgG, IgA and IgD. So mu, epsilon, gamma, alpha, delta. So these are the what? Uh, immunoglobulins are antibodies present in the uh, body. So these all can generate humoral immune response. The word humoral refers to they are present or they are going to produce in the blood. So blood is considered as a humor, red humor, so called as humoral immune response found in the blood. Next, Ig, the word Ig refers to, I stands for immuno, uh, sorry, immunoglobulin. Ig refers to immunoglobulin. I stands for immuno, G stands for globulin. The proteins, I mean the globulin protein play a very important role in the immune system. So called as immunoglobulin. So, simply called as antibodies. I told yesterday, all antibodies are immunoglobulins, but not all immunoglobulins are antibodies. Next, antibody refers to, it is a complex glycoprotein secreted by B lymphocytes, very important word, only in response to antigen. Means, when antigen enter into the body, that time only the antibodies are going to produce. So, it is also called as agglutinin. 
then antigen or agglutinogen so these are the proteinous substance which stimulates the production of antibodies so there is a small correlation between the antigen and antibody antibodies are the glycoproteins they are going to produce by the b lipocytes only in presence of antigen so when the antigens enter into the body they stimulate the production of antibodies next this is the structure of antibody heavy chains light chain variable reason then constant reason etc then uh, each antibody has four peptide chains i told you that is two light chain two heavy chains then uh, these two chains are held together by disulfide bonds then such antibody is represented as h2l2 so those five types of antibodies are found in the blood hence called as humoral immune response so these antibodies bring antibody mediated immunity so called as ami antibody mediated immunity i told you yesterday so when any antigen enter into the body the b lymphocytes never directly kill the antigen so that b lymphocyte can kill the antigen by producing the antibodies so that it is called as antibody mediated immunity or humoral immunity next today we are going to discuss about this t lymphocytes so t lymphocytes uh, in the last class i told you b lymphocyte means that a cell which is formed matured and proliferated by the bone marrow hence the name b lymphocyte the word b denotes for bone marrow dependent cell meanwhile t lymphocytes refers to the cell which is formed in the bone marrow and they migrate to the thymus as you know that thymus refers to it is a lymphoid organ we will discuss in the next class so lymphoid organ so this t lymphocyte can be formed in the bone marrow and migrate to the thymus for maturation and proliferation as well as differentiation hence t lymphocyte t refers to thymus dependent cell why it's called as thymus dependent because t cell is formed in the bone marrow but undergo maturation differentiation and proliferation in the thymus hence called as t lymphocyte thymus dependent cell or thymus dependent lymphocytes correct so what is the thing here so these do not produce antibodies very important b lymphocytes are going to produce antibodies but t lymphocytes they never produce antibodies but the thing is that they help the b cells to produce antibodies i hope you understand so b cells directly produce antibodies same time t lymphocytes never produce antibodies but they help the b cells to produce antibodies this is a very important role of t lymphocyte then t cells simply called as t lymphocytes so generate cell mediated immunity clear cell mediated immune response or cell mediated immunity it is called as cmi cell mediated immune response or cell mediated immunity so what mean by this i told you just before the class uh, antibody mediated immunity ami it means that the b lymphocyte directly will not kill the antigen it is going to kill the antigen by producing the antibodies hence the name antibody mediated immunity and here t cell can bring cell mediated immunity it means that so the t cell directly go near the antigen and it is going to kill that antigen hence called as cell mediated it means the immunity is bring by t lymphocyte directly t cells are going to destroy the pathogen hence the name cell mediated immunity or simply the immunity is bring by t lymphocytes or t cells hence called as cell mediated immunity the word cell refers to t lymphocytes cell mediated immunity play a very important role in the organ transplantation very important word organ transplantation from donor to recipient it means that any person who is suffering or uh, damage of any organ in the body so during that time only the i mean uh, the curing is to transplant the organs from donor to recipient so it means that uh, uh, the person who is uh, suffering with the damage with the kidney or heart or eyes liver transplantation so that time we need to check the uh, blood groups isn't it so match blood matching tissue matching whatever so that time 
these cell or T lymphocytes are responsible for the matter of rejection. It means that expectedly, unexpectedly or knowingly, unknowingly, if we transplant the other organ to a part, that is a recipient. Clear? So there the blood matching or tissue matching is not possible. So that time these cell or T lymphocytes are going to take, I mean, they play a very important role in the graft rejection. Very important word, graft, graft rejection means when you transplant that organ to a recipient, it may be immediately or it may be a, after a long time, these T lymphocytes can uh, identify that particular transplant organ and they are going to reject it. So called as graft rejection. So that time the cell uh, T cells are going to play a very important role. And one more is this response helps the body to differentiate self and non-self. The word self refers to our own body organs. Non-self refers to we are transplanting the other organ into the body called as non-self. So in this, this self and non-self are easily differentiated by T lymphocytes. I hope you understand. So T lymphocytes play a very important role in the organ transplantation. It may be heart, it may be kidney, it may be liver or it may be eye. So that time we need to, I mean, these uh, cells, that is T lymphocytes play very important role. So if there is no matching between that the donor and recipient, these T lymphocytes are going to reject that particular organ. <coughs> Next, immunity, in that I get two types, one is active immunity and passive immunity. So active immunity, it means that, very simple, active immunity, this is the naturally acquired immunity produced in the host body, produced in the body only in response to that antigen. Very simple, when any antigen enter into my body, immediately or it may take some time, but my body or my immune system is going to produce the antibodies. Clear? So those antibodies can attack those antigens and they are going to destroy that antigen. The whole mechanism is simply considered as active immunity. Here the word active refers to my own immune system is going to kill that or destroy that pathogen or antigen is considered as active immunity. Very simple. Next. So when we expose to antigen, when we expose to any antigen or any antigen enter into my body, the antibodies are produced. I hope you understand. So whenever there is I mean, antigen present in the body, they stimulate the production of antibodies. So when we expose any kind of antigen or any antigen enter into the body, the antibodies are produced in the host body in response to that antigen. In response to that antigen means because of presence of antigen into the body, in the body, the antibodies are going to produce so called as active immunity. So here the word active refers to we are not inducing, we are not providing any kind of tablets, medications, vaccines, immunization, nothing. So our own body is going to produce the antibodies against that antigen, simply called as active immunity. So once again, when any antigen enter into the body, in response to that antigen, my own immune system is going to produce the antibodies to destroy that antigen is simply called as active immunity. I hope you understand. Next, active immunity is slow and takes time to respond. I told you people so that the generation of antibodies, it takes a little bit time. So this, is, this active immunity is slow and takes time to respond. Next. The immunization and body, the immunization and body naturally getting immunity. So I hope you remember that while uh, discussing about common cold. So I told you while uh, discussing with the treatment. So I told you you should not take any kind of medication for the common cold. Why? Because for the common cold or rhinovirus, our body itself has to produce the antibodies or we should become more immune, isn't it? So for that reason, I mean our body should become resistant to that antigen. The same time, immunization and body naturally getting immunity to a microbe or pathogen that had caused infection previously or uh, before that. So are examples of active immunity. It means so when any antigen enter into the body, our bodies or our uh, immune system is going to produce antibodies and they are going to destroy that antigen. So that memory is present in our body. So consider as active immunity. Very simple. 
नेक्स्ट पैसिव इम्यूनिटी अपोजिट टू एक्टिव इम्यूनिटी एक्टिव इम्यूनिटी मीन्स आई टोल्ड यू our own immune system is going to produce antibodies to destroy antigen At the same time passive immunity means when we suffering from any kind of infection or disease we need to provide we need to provide the ready made antibodies from immunized person from the immunized person means already one who is have great resistance against that disease so we need to take the antibodies from that immunized person and when we were going to inject or we are going to provide the you know ready made antibodies into the the suspect or diseased person is considered as passive immunity once again so passive immunity means when any antigen enter into my body that time my immune system is not responding to that antigen so that i am getting disease that time doctors are going to provide the ready made antibodies to my body so it means doctors are going to inject the ready made antibodies in the form of injection or in the form of tablets or antibiotics so called as passive immunity means we are providing the ready made antibodies to the diseased person is considered as passive immunity so when ready made antibodies are provided to an individual the word individual refers to the person who is suffering from disease to protect the body against foreign agents refers to antigen or pathogen or antigen is called as passive immunity very simple next uh, some of the examples good example are there one is colostrum the word colostrum refers to the initial few days of milk as we discussed in uh, i think third chapter uh, human reproduction so colostrum refers to it is a initial few days of milk in the mother so that milk contain that milk contain iga antibody very important word iga antibodies are present in the colostrum that is initial few days of milk so that is provided to the baby isn't it so breast during breast feeding so that time those antibodies that is iga antibodies can enter into the baby from mother so that iga can provide immunity for the baby so it is one example for the passive immunity it means that that time the baby is unable to produce the antibodies it means that in case of baby there is no such immune system so for that reason at least the baby is going to develop its own immune system that period the baby's immune system is regulated by that iga which is uh, entered from the mother to baby so this is one one of the example for the passive immunity and one more best example is also the fetus gets antibodies from the mother uh, during developmental stage clear so during pregnancy period the igg immunoglobulin gamma so these such antibodies can transferred from uh, mother to baby or fetus through placenta so this also one of the best example in case of passive immunity next vaccination so as you know that right now the whole world scientists are uh, very busy with the discovery of corona vaccine isn't it so now i would like to tell you what mean by vaccine what is the importance of vaccine clear so very important vaccination means vaccine is the suspension or preparation of inactivated very important word not live so inactivated pathogens or inactivated pathogens means we are going to take that a uh, particular antigen or pathogen we are going to kill it so simply called as attenuation please note it attenuation the word inactivation refers to attenuation or antigenic protein of pathogen means a very important part of that particular uh, antigen is considered as antigenic protein of pathogen which is taken orally or injection so as you know that some of the vaccines are going to take give by orally or some of the vaccines can be given by Uh, injections so that particular inactivated pathogen or the antigenic protein of the pathogen which is given or taken to orally or injected to individual to provide immunity from that pathogen it means that when you inject or give orally the uh, that uh, inactivated pathogen into a particular person or individual that time that particular inactivated antigen enter into the body so in response to that inactivated antigen the antibodies are going to produce in the 
body or in the individual so that time uh, the immune cells we can call it as a memory cells are going to remember that antigen very important part this is what we need here so in response to this inactivated pathogen our body immune system is going to produce the antibodies those antibodies are going to destroy this inactivated pathogen same time what we need here is that our immune cells simply called as memory cells those memory cells will keep the memory of this antigen clear this so our memory cells will keep the memory of this uh, the inactivated pathogen so in future the same antigen or pathogen enter into the body uh, they resulting in the secondary immune response it refers to uh, our memory cells will indicate memory cells will uh, uh, take a chance to produce uh, enormous or massive production of antibodies resulting in the they are going to stop the occurring of the disease this is what the vaccination same time the principle behind this vaccination is the base on the memory of the immune system i told you when this inactivated pathogen enter into the body resulting in the antibodies are going to produce those antibodies are going to kill this pathogen no doubt but the memory cells are going to keep the memory of this inactivated pathogen next when an antigenic material is injected in a healthy person it generates antibodies and memory cells memory cells as a primary immune response clear i told you a primary immune response will take a little bit time next when this active pathogen or real pathogen enters second time inside this body of vaccinated person vaccinated means the person already injected with the inactivated pathogen clear so called as vaccinated person so those memory cells rapidly recognize i told you the whole vaccination mechanism is based on the memory of the immune system so those memory cells rapidly recognize and respond with a massive production of antibodies resulting in that uh, that the antigen or pathogen is going to destroy so production of lymphocytes and antibodies so these antibodies and lymphocytes are going to kill or destroy that pathogen so that individual never get that disease in future this is what the concept of vaccination so once again vaccination means it is suspension or preparation that preparation is made up of inactivated pathogen or the part of the protein is part of that antigen so that is injected to a person or healthy person clear so that time a body immune system is going to recognize that antigen and is going to produce the antibodies so along with that the antibodies are going to kill or destroy that pathogen that is one side same time our immune system is going to produce memory cells that memory cells keep the memory of that antigen okay? called as primary immune response in future the same pathogen enter into the body what happens those memory cells will immediately come into action those memory cells will intimate the uh, b lymphocytes to produce antibodies as well as t lymphocytes so those antibodies as well as lymphocytes play a very important role in the destruction of that pathogen or antigen so this is what the vaccination next so the lymphocytes and antibodies destroy the pathogen rapidly and disease does not appear in case of vaccinated person next person becomes resistant in future also the person become resistant for that disease after vaccination so once we give vaccination to the healthy person he never ever get disease in future also this is the concept of vaccination first time the edward jenner the scientist called edward jenner given the idea of vaccination this is the first person next immunization the word immunization means when a person is infected with the pathogen we need to inject or very important word pre formed antibodies very important word pre formed antibodies means already we prepared those antibodies in the laboratory is called as pre formed antibodies or we are going to take those antibodies from the immunized person clear so called as pre formed antibodies or anti toxin clear to the uh, to fight against the pathogen is called as passive immunization hope you understand once again immunization means a person who is suffering from any kind of disease or infection that time we need to inject that person or diseased person with the pre formed antibodies 
the word preformed antibodies means we need to take out those antibodies from the uh, immunized person or vaccinated person or resistant person Clear? and also called as antitoxin to fight against the uh, pathogen is called as passive immunization examples during snake bite and tetanus one example i can tell you so during snake bite it means that when you take up animal and to that animal uh, that i mean snake bite so after snake bite that animal is going to produce a massive production of antibodies in its body so that time we need to isolate we need to regard that antibodies from that particular animal and prepare a solution or injection or tablet so when any person commit a dead of snake bite that time we can provide the antibodies the ready made antibodies to that particular person is considered as passive immunization clear and one more is tetanus next uh, recombination dna technology as we know that uh, uh, dna technology so by make use of dna technology our scientist has produced vaccines in a large scale isn't it last thing is we need to meet the demand of whole world so that by being use of recombinant dna technology our scientists have uh, produced vaccines in a large scale by using antigenic polypeptide of pathogen means a very important sequence from the pathogen is considered as antigenic polypeptide of pathogen which is produced in the bacteria or yeast so one such example is hepatitis b vaccine is produced from the yeast that is hepatitis b vaccine from the is so many vaccines are there those all vaccines are going to produce by the uh, either bacteria or yeast or any other animals so one one more example is so human insulin is produced from the bacteria that is e coli bacteria so it is come under the same recombinant dna technology so this technology we will discuss in biotechnology chapter clear this so i hope you understand this uh, vaccination concept so we'll discuss in the next class thank you very much